G'day everyone. This is my mate Simon's 61 series. Uh, it's a really good typical Land Cruiser in so many ways. It's got the advantage of the 12 HT motor, five speed of course. Now, a couple of years ago, we did this amazing trip with the original Milo, where we basically belted all the way to Darwin, taking a whole lot of backtracks. And we went to my mate MD's wedding up there, which was pretty wild. Uh, and then we came home again. We did some insane off-roading up there around the Adelaide River. Oh, it's great having dogs, isn't it? In the middle of all of this, you know, and either side of all of this, Simon's a family man, of course, and he lives up the coast and he's up and down the beach all the time with his, with his boys and taking them out into the bush camping and everything else. And then he uses the truck as a daily driver. Now, the result of that is 630,000 Ks on the clock of this 61 series and before Cy even got it, it had done two trips around Australia. All of that was done on the original gearbox. And you know what that means, don't you? The gearbox in this thing sounds like someone's trying to beat up a bunch of ferrets with a mix master. It's making some horrible noises, especially on the overrun, which sort of indicates transfer gear, wear, shaft, something like that in there, as well as a few other issues. Now, the funny thing about it is, it's still going okay, because Cy always does regular oil changes and he uses Penrite, but at the end of the day, she needs some repair. And now, we're gonna show you what's involved in that. Anyone who's into mucking around with old trucks is going to know where their local terrain tamer is. In my case, it's out at Archerfield, and I know the guys real well. Oh, beauty. I usually stop and have a yarn with Rod about his oh, 60 mate. series, and when Mark's here, well, we're talking all sorts of machinery. <laughs> hey, always. <laughs> Thanks, Rod. See you, mate. About mate. now, I'm wondering how far Rich has got with the strip down. They got all the right tools, and he's got Mick out there to give him a hand too. Should be good. Right, so 60's up on the hoist now, so it's always good to do some... Um, some initial checks. So we, we found some play in the uh, the rear tail shaft front UJ. So we know we need to address that. That could be making some noises. Uh, front UJ on the um, the gearbox flange, the bolts are actually loose, so that could make um, a lot of noise um, when it's in four wheel drive and especially low range. Um, when you drop your oil, check the colour, check for swarf. Um, you know, metallic-y um, remnants in the oil. Um, you've got your, your your magnet in the sump plug. You'll see that there's um, a little bit on there, but you're looking for big chunks, really, so it gives you an idea that there might be something uh, deeper going on in there. But um, I know that the customer on this 60, he services it regularly, so um, the oil came out quite clean, and we haven't got a lot of uh, material on the magnet. So um, I'm looking forward to getting inside this to see what's going on, because it is a noisy gearbox. Hopefully it's just um, wear and tear, because the vehicle's done over 650,000 Ks. Right, so if you are going to attempt to do this on the floor at home, um, be very aware that these are extremely heavy gearboxes. Um, make sure you've got a decent jack with a, some sort of platform, not just the, the, the jack platform that it comes with. So we use, the, our, the gearbox stand comes with chains. I don't like using them. So we, we use bit, blocks of wood to make it all steady and then strap the thing to the gearbox stand so we're all nice and uh, sturdy. Gearbox stands are great because they come down to a level where you can then manhandle them off with two people so um, we'll drop this out we've got the two top bellows and bolts to get off now um, we'll get it out and get it on the bench that's some really good advice there from Richard oh. and you know if you've got all the gear like they have then that's a fantastic way to go but I've seen this job done in fact I've done it myself back in the old days with you know 40s and even with Land Rovers and they've got some pretty heavy bits in them where the best way to do it was just keep the whole lot close to the floor. So you'd just use axle stands and you'd slip in and out underneath and you'd be using good old sort of wind-up sockets and things like that. But at the end of the day, don't let not having all the tools put you off, but do make sure that you're aware of how much all this clobber weighs. So I got it out on the stand here, just about to get it on the bench, start stripping it down. A couple of things to note is that this is out of a HJ61, so we've got the vacuum-operated... Um, four-wheel drive selector um, so they're a bit different from the earlier ones that have got the manual selector um, just be aware of that uh, we do a lot of conversions down here for the the 40 series now you can't use these gearboxes you have to use the manual um, manual selector because this just doesn't fit between the um, between the chassis so 
Um, we'll get it so you can see it's a beach truck because there's plenty of sand and um, stuck to the lanolin and that. So we'll get it on the bench, strip it down, give the casings a clean and that should be all uh, nice and clean to go back together. So one important thing to do, not just doing a re uh, gearbox rebuild, when you're doing a clutch, always make sure you take this taco sender out because if you damage it on the way back in, um, you'll be in for a world of trouble because they're not cheap. So just remove it and that will be the last thing to go back in um, when you're reassembling. Right, so when you get up on the bench and you're ready to strip it down, make sure you've got a nice big area where you can lay all the parts out in sequence because when you come to put the gearbox back together, it'll help you out because it goes back in the reverse order. Um, remember, there's a lot of parts. You'd be surprised how many little components there are in this gearbox. So um, yeah, the bigger the space, the better. So, right, let's crack on, Mick. You're going to start doing the transfer case. I'll get on with the bell housing. Yep, it certainly does pay to have a good bench and lots of space because there's a lot of components in a gearbox and transfer in any sort of vehicle. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's just a machine. It's just nuts and bolts. You just have to think your way through it. Give it a go sometime. You might be surprised. So Mick's just um, releasing the locking tabs. It's always good practice to do this because you can just gun them off, and people do. You, we do get all brand new ones with the kit, but... Um, it just protects the threads. Now, that's the most important thing at the end of the day. So you do this the whole way through the strip down, but just anything that has moving parts on it, check for wear. So where the spit, where, on the first motion shaft, where the spigot bearing is, we've got a little bit of wear there. Check for wear, where the, where the throw out bearing runs on. That's nice and clear, because what happens when they get seized up and broken, they can do damage to that, but we're all good here. So we've got a top hat here. Other than needing a, a really good clean, um, just flip it over and what you're doing, you're checking for wear marks, excessive wear marks on the, on the selector forks. Check that all your detents are working and that none of the springs are broken. Just go through all those. Um, things like these gaiters and that with the terrain tamer kit, you get all brand new ones of these so they could just go in the bin. And um, so yeah, put it aside. Get in the cleaning bin and move on to the rest of it. We can have a look in the top now and see if we've got any teeth miss or anything like that at first glance. So we're going around, just checking everything. And there doesn't seem to be any teeth missing, which is all, uh, obviously a good sign. At this stage, I like to check that the, we've still got a bite on the, on the synchro clutches. See, it all looks pretty good. So once we get the transfer case off and out of the way, get fifth gear casing off, we start getting right in there. Again, we're just checking for wear. So we've got this, the, um, the seal runs on this surface here. Just make sure it's not notched excessively, which this one isn't. And then just check the first motion shaft bearing. We've got a little bit of play there, but nothing to write home about. Um, hopefully we find some more wear further on down the line. So we're just about to take the, the transfer casing apart. Um, doesn't matter how much oil you let out the, uh, the sump plug, you're always going to have a fair amount left in there. And if, if you're on the bench, it will go everywhere and spread everywhere. So we've just lent it off the edge of the bench here, chopped it up with some wood, and we're going to release the oil into a pan. So come on in, Mick, we'll knock this off. <laughs> That's definitely the kind of thing you uh, never quite learn the first time around, eh? You know, that the oil's going to drop all over the place. But what you've got to remember too is that Mick's done a heap of these and so is Richard. And so when they hook into something, they're picking up the right tools. They're just using whatever's at hand sometimes, you know. I mean, get a load of Mick when it comes to tapping off the transfer to loosen it up. He's just into it with a mallet. I mean, you definitely want to have done it a couple of times before you start whacking away. I think I might have been using the rubber one and starting a bit more gently. But there goes the oil. You can see it running out from underneath. So the guys knew what they were doing. I wonder if uh, they remembered to put something on the floor to pick up the oil. You've noticed Richard all the way through this is examining everything, is playing with it, is moving things around. Not only is he looking for wear, he's going to be putting all this gearbox back together, isn't he? And the transfer. So it kind of pays to have it all fresh in your mind the way the thing operates. So we've got a fair amount of, a um, little bit of wear on the, on the race here, on the bearing race there. We've got notchiness in the, in the transfer output shaft bearing there. So I think pretty much it's done so many miles that 
all the bearings are going to have a little bit of play and wear, and that's what's that's what's attributing to the noise, I think. So, um, yeah, let's start pulling these bearings off. Get this transfer case off, Mick. Have a look at fifth gear. Right, so finally we found something, an issue in this gearbox. So, um, first things first. Now, a lot of you guys, you'll see a weeping out of the, uh, this is the idler shaft in the transfer case. And you get a weep, it, you see this bit. This is where the locking tab goes. Um, these, to fix this problem, you've got to take the transfer case apart. And there's an O-ring that sits just in here. And that is rock hard, rock solid. That'll be doing no sealing whatsoever. So the pressure inside the gearbox, when you've got blocked breathers and stuff like that, will slowly push oil past this seal. So, but this all comes in the terrain tamer kit. Um, also, we've got your thrust washers here. Um, and these run, so you've got your idler gear, sits on that shaft. And these thrust washers sit either side, up against there. Now they've worn right through, if you can see that, both sides. So that's just wear and tear, 630,000 Um I'm surprised we didn't see any swarf in the gearbox, but probably attributed to the fact that um, he services the vehicle regularly. So um, again, comes with the kit, brand new thrust washers. We've got wear on the needle bearings here. Uh, where was it? So that'll be making a hell of a racket. Yep, just there. Um, so yeah, no, I'm glad we found something. That means that when we go back together, it's gonna be a nice, sweet gearbox, nice one. So we've removed the, the forward transfer case. Uh, we've got the fifth gear cover off to expose fifth gear. Everything looks absolutely beautiful when it comes to the gearbox side of things. So I'm really happy about that. I think we found our misdemeanor, which is the, um, that idler, the idler bearings in the transfer case. So uh, there's no play apart from some little bit of play in the input shaft. So we'll put the terrain tamer kit through it, all brand new bearings, synchros, everything like that. This will be a beautiful gearbox again. A few more things to check until then, but um, I'm pretty, pretty positive about what's going on. Right, so now we've got the, the gearbox side of things all stripped down, laid out on the, on the bench here. We're just going into it a bit more, looking a bit closely at the shafts and how the synchros work and all that. So everything's, I'm pretty happy with most things on the, uh, the output shaft, but on the lay shaft, which is at the bottom of the gearbox, which takes your first motion shaft power and then sends it back up. Um, on the bearing surface here, it started, it started to peel away. Um, this is the first signs that this will just fail. Uh, where it, it might last two months, might last two years, but not something we're going to put back in the vehicle. So, need a new first mo um, Sorry, need a new lay shaft. Um, it's been onto terrain tamer already. They're going to get us one overnight, and we're just going to carry on um, pulling off the bearings and replacing all the bearings and all the other shafts ready for it. And then hopefully tomorrow, in the post, first thing we'll get our our lay shaft because that's the first component to go back in the gearbox before you start building the whole, the whole box and transfer back up. So let's crack on with these bearings. Oi, oi, here we go, here comes John. It probably took me as long to get from Archerfield to Caboolture as it did for the boys to strip the gearbox out and down. Toyota parts delivered by Nissan. Who'd have thought it? Oh, don't tell anyone you saw that, all right? <laughs> How you doing, mate? With the lot rich. Nice one. Just what the doctor ordered. Oh, Check so, it out. Yeah. This is the most comprehensive kit ever. It's They're the awesome. Tamer, yeah, yeah, definitely. So, what'd you find? What's the noise? Well, the gearbox itself, fantastic condition. Right, so You're joking. No, no, no. I've Unbelievably. Unbelievably. <laughs> right? So the problem was in the transfer case yeah. on the lay shaft or the, or the idler shaft. Okay. Um, we've got the thrust washers here. You so can... for the benefit of those who don't know, this is the transfer gear. Yep, that's it. That's your high and low range. That's it. That's the shaft that runs through the middle yep. of it. And the needle bearings and the cages that go in there to support it. And these are, these are held in place by two thrust washers. Right. Yeah. Oh, look at the wear there. Yeah. They've right. almost worn through, actually. There's not a lot left. Gee. And that'll be creating side-side movement. And Too much energy. It has the, um, the hemispherical gears on and off the power, just moving it backwards and forwards and getting worse and worse. It gives you that... So how would you describe the symptoms? The oh, boring. slop, noise. Like, you'd hear it. Especially noise on the overrun. On the overrun, definitely. Inside. Yeah, because those gears would be not running where they should be on the, on the uh, yeah. corresponding gear. And we should point out that it's been making that noise for... 
there for years. Yeah. <laughs> so Pretty it's much. Tough yeah, oh yeah, definitely. But, but it's been getting worse and worse. And the, any damage on the bench? Yeah, yeah, we got you can see the wear there on the on the needle rollers. Yeah. Look at those, there's loads, look. Oh gee. Yeah, look at that. Where oh man, you can feel it. Was there much metal yeah. in there? No, there wasn't because he you, you, you know him, he, he, he um, looks after his vehicle and he's forever changing the oils and stuff like that. So there wasn't a lot in it, actually. So, so really, the constant oil changes mm. and using uh, the right guy too. Yeah, definitely. So that, that is elongated. The, definitely. The longevity. 100 I'm using words I don't understand here. <laughs> it made it last longer. Yeah, that's yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. Which is cool. And this kit, mm -hmm. look at that. New idle shaft. Brand new idle shaft. Brand new... Idle shaft bearings. Mm. And then you're... Uh, and they've got the... Oh, that looks like it's upgraded. Yeah, they do. There's more, more of a... Seems to be more of a surface area that they run yeah, on there. So. Yeah, look at that. So, mm. basically, I mean, that's what you expect from Terrain Tamer. They yep. know what's going to wear out. Yep. So they've supplied it as part of the kit. That's it. And he's going to get a full gearbox rebuild as well. That's it. So it should go for another 30,000... Oh, not 30,000, yeah. 630,000. 630,000, yeah. yeah. No, that's beautiful. So, yeah. Keeping the old trucks alive. That's Good it, on, mate. mate. Nice All one. Right. I better let you get to it. Yeah, we're still going. <laughs> right, so got the clutch and flywheel off. Now, I know the history of this vehicle. I only did the, um, the clutch a short while ago, so it's almost like brand new. We don't usually do it, but we'll be putting this one back in the vehicle. New spigot bearing, and um, we're going to get the fly mill machi flywheel machined. Um, give it a nice brand new surface so we don't get any judder or anything. So, uh, yeah, there we go. Um, we better get back over to the gearbox and get some of these bearings done. If you look at this ground up resto on a shorty, probably uh, mid to late 70s, um, this is one the boys are doing out here at Mr. Lancruz. It's beautiful. But the first thing I noticed was the gearbox hasn't been done up. And I asked Richard, I said, what's, what's the go there? Apparently the customer drove this up from Sydney and he figured the gearbox was pretty good. You can tell with these things, you know, if they're good, they're good. So he knew what he was doing, so he wanted ground up, everything done, except the gearbox and the transfer. Fine, no problems at all. The boys do things to custom, but isn't it nice to see, hey? 2F motor, it looks like it's had, it, it's had everything. It's been totally recoed, it's had the block boiled, it's just been worked over beautifully. If you look around, you can see all the good gear. Terrain Tamer suspension back and front, new parts everywhere, all new brakes. If anyone tells you you have to drive some throwaway piece of rubbish, why don't you suggest to them that you can rebuild an old Land Cruiser and make it better than new? Because that's what this one will be. Nice job, man. Really good. So there you have it all laid out. Pretty much the way it should go back together and a full terrain tamer kit with absolutely everything supplied. All we got to do now is put it back together. Hey, Rich? Righto, you'd better watch part two then, eh? <laughs>